So now you're saying, you know, Kevin, I was okay with the Lewis diagrams before, but now I got to remember all about this, this formal charge stuff and the best Lewis diagram. That's going to be crazy. Okay, it's a little bit trickier, but just remember, if you've got a central atom that can exceed the octet rule, then make it exceed the octet rule. Now, I told you to try to give it as many bonds as it is group number. And sometimes if it's got a lone pair, though, what you just have to do is just keep the lone pair there and fill up the rest of the bonds to make the group number. And I'm going to show you how that's done here with XeO3. Now, that's xenon trioxide, and I know what you're saying. You're saying, wait a minute, whoa, uh, that's a noble gas. How's that bond with oxygen? Well, we can make it bond with oxygen. If we just increase the pressure and the temperature, we can take xenon and make it react in all kinds of ways. So we can force it to react. It's very unstable, of course, but yet uh, we can actually make noble gases form bonds. A little influence. Now, 26 is the number of valence electrons because oxygen is in group 6 times 3 is 18 plus 8, group 8 for xenon, total of 26, 18 plus 8. Now, you do the Lewis diagram, put xenon in the middle, three O's around it, and you go, that's, that's one, two, three, four pairs of electrons, that's a total of eight, eight times three is 24, 25, 26. Beautiful, it looks like that that's the Lewis diagram, and then you say to yourself, hey, can I exceed the octet rule here? Yup, and why do I have to? Again, all of these are going to be negative one for formal charge because you know that now that any oxygen that doesn't have a double bond in it is actually not as stable as it could be. Oxygen likes double bond. Now, what's the xenon? It's normally in group eight, but here, what do we assign it? Two and then half of the bonding electron totals here. So two, three, four, five. Eight minus five equals plus three, right? So that's a plus three. Now notice, Minus one, minus one, minus one, plus three. That ain't zeros for anything, so that's not as good. But what do you do? Just take that central atom and start sticking in bonds. And what do you really need to do? There's a difference of three here, so give it three more bonds. There's a difference of three, give it three more bonds. So watch. Where are you going to get those bonds from, right? You're going to get them from the oxygen lone pairs. So what you're going to do is take one from there, one from there, one from there. And you go one, two, three. Now what does that do? Every one of these oxygens now, oxygen is normally in group six, two, <laughs> two, four, and then five, six, one for each bond, and that's six minus six, which equals zero. So every one of these oxygens has what we call a formal charge of zero. And look at the xenon in the middle. It's got two, and now all the bonds, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's normally in group eight, and you assigned it 8, 8 minus 8 is 0, it's a 0, everything's a 0. Is that the best Lewis diagram? Yes. Is that the one you're going to put on your test? Yes. Is that, does that mean you're going to get 100% on this one? Absolutely, your teacher's going to be so impressed. Just remember, if you can't exceed the octet rule from the, for the central one, then do it.